and take you back out to Baltimore and the scene of the key bridge there. Let's get you caught up on the latest of the investigation. So they are trying to figure out why that massive cargo ship lost propulsion and hit the bridge. The National Transportation Safety Board said that agents have now recovered the data recorders from inside the ship to try to figure out what happened before the May Day calls. Meantime, uh, divers working in tough conditions, you can only imagine, to recover the remains of the six workers who fell off the bridge that night. I can't stress enough the heroism of these folks. They are in frigid conditions. They are down there in, in, in darkness where they can literally see about a foot in front of them. They are trying to navigate mangled metal. Uh, and they're also in a place that they, uh, it is now presumed that people have lost their lives. So the work of these first responders, the work of these divers, I, um, I, I cannot stress enough how remarkable these, uh, these individuals are. And as the difficult search continues, the reality of the infrastructure problems really start. Now, the Key Bridge, critical commuter link, not only for north sound traffic on I-95, 34,000 drivers a day will have to find a different route there. But some of those drivers are trucks, and they are carrying an estimated $28 billion a year of goods to the East Coast and beyond. Not only truck traffic, but poor traffic, too. This port is responsible for over 51 million tons of foreign cargo. That's the largest in the country, that for everybody who is buying cars, for everybody who is buying farm equipment, we're the largest port in the country that does that. So this is not just impacting Maryland. This is impacting that farmer in Kentucky. It's impacting that auto dealer in Michigan. And so it is imperative that we get this bridge rebuilt. It's imperative that we get the Port of Baltimore back up and going. And it's not just about how are we supporting Maryland. This is about how we support the American economy. Absolutely. The governor said it. Not only auto dealers in Michigan with trucks and parts, we're also going into planting season here. Big agricultural, of course, here in Michigan in the Midwest. Um, so machinery imports, equipment and so much more. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is with me now. He's been looking into the what we could see impact wise here. Hank, you know, they tell us that Baltimore is number one for automobile port in, in the U.S. Have the automakers come out with any statements on, on kind of impact that we could be seeing here? We haven't heard anything directly from uh, any of the automakers here locally, but I mean, you heard it there from Governor Moore, the impact is gonna be felt and it's gonna be a ripple effect. And not only did he mention the automobile industry specifically with Mich Michigan, but as you pointed out, Christy, farming, and it's not just the person in Kentucky. I mean, we are a major farming state and industrial hub in many different ways from auto, auto manufacturing uh, to farming. So Michigan's really gonna feel the pinch of this. I mean, more than 5,000 trucks a day across that, that bridge. It's one of the 15 busiest ports uh, within the United States. So uh, the ripple effect of this is going to be widespread, uh, although I don't think we're going to see uh, COVID letter level proportions of, of delays with certain items, but uh, you can expect the impact to be felt both by the automobile sector and the, and the farming sector. Yeah, you know, and I think that it was a good point that you, you know, you made about COVID and looking back to that and the impact that we had with logistics and, and supply chain. Uh, sometimes we take for granted here in, you know, in the Midwest, we've got the ports out on the West Coast with people, things coming from Asia and then also on, on the East Coast. What about goods like, uh, you know, from Amazon or even some of the overseas, um, you know, m markets that, uh, that people are ordering from? Have you heard if there's any kind of, kind of a ripple effect there? We haven't really heard anything really shopping related. A lot of those items that do come from China or overseas, their first stop at the port of entry is usually New York or D.C. Uh, Baltimore, though, probably does take some of those goods and, and farms them out. Uh, but there is a direct pipeline from Baltimore across 95 and then makes its way and fans across the Midwest and down to some southern states like Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, so we are going to feel the impact of it. It's just not going to be that severe, um, but it may cause some inventory issues, especially with automakers. And I think, you know, the governor did a good point of, of mentioning that is a possibility. And, and, you know, we all understand and remember being patient uh, during COVID. Uh, so we're likely going to have to do that again. But uh, again, I don't think it's going to be as wide ranging and as severe as it was during the pandemic. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for getting us caught up to speed on that. Hank Winchester, of course, our uh, consumer investigator there. Have a good one, Hank. We'll see you a little bit later on today.